Lynn Dwyer. Um, I live in the community. I am in Eagle Rock Neighborhood Council in, uh, District in uh, part of 90041, so over by Dublin. I'm a member of the Design Review Board for Colorado Boulevard. I think the bike lanes are great. I think more healthy environments, people out moving. I am totally for this proposal for bike lanes in both directions. Thank you. Jack, Jack, here, Jack, Gold, I can't make out the rest of the last one. Goldhammer. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right. I just have a couple of questions. Um, when I came to uh, Eagle Rock in 1950, I had a, a truck and I was hauling uh, material for the streets. And I voted for every damn bond that came up because I wanted that truck busy. But just for the mark you now, just a few years ago, I found out where the money was coming from. And it was coming out of us. It isn't coming from the uh, it isn't coming from the uh, people that are collecting it. It's coming from us. And the, the other thing was, um, we'll have to pardon me. I'm getting old. Um, they just, they, I, I listened to all these arguments and all these things before. Okay, so your, your minute's up. You might want to wrap it up. Wrap, wrap it up, please. Okay. Um, and, you brought all these things out here. We're not engineers. You took our time. You took our time. You tell us where the money is coming from, where, uh, what are you going to do, what's your next step, and how our kids are going to pay for your stuff that's going on now. Okay. Thank you. So, this is only the comment period. That's the other questions, but I think it's a worthwhile question as to where the money is coming from. That's a... The funds for these projects come out of Measure R local returns, specifically for bicycle and pedestrian improvements. There's a, per a percentage that's given to the cities. This is the half cent sales tax that was part of Measure R, bulk of which goes towards transit. There's a small percentage that goes to cities to do bicycle and pedestrian improvements. That's where this money is coming from. It's not for any other purpose. That was voted upon by the voters, a half cent sales tax to improve public interest, public confidence, public interest. Mark Warren. Mark Warren, I've lived in New York and I'm in the park all my life. It seems to me that we're becoming far less car friendly and by all the looks of the cars, it's going to take us 10 minutes to get from one end of Eagle Rock to the other. We need to use the freeways because I'm not going through all this. But I think that if the bikers want a lane, let them have a license. When I was a kid, I had to have a license on my bike. And let them have insurance because when there's an accident, who are they going to blame? They're going to blame the cars. And I've never seen a, a bike come to a stoplight, a stop sign on Hill Drive, and stop. Michelle, Luis Lopez, and Naidel Gongora. Just let them go and have them repeat their name. If they're part of the three, let them go whoever comes up first. Naidel Gongora, I've been a president of Eagle Rock 42 years, and I believe that we need to slow the traffic down on Colorado Boulevard. <laughs> Good evening, Councilor Luizar. Uh, Luis Lopez, stakeholder resident here in New York, 90401. I'm here to support the bike lanes for all the enhancements, for the slowing of the traffic, and also here uh, as a director of a very large nonprofit health center. And when we think about health in communities, we need to do everything we can from a planning perspective to make sure that there's more opportunity for, for exercise, for recreation, and that's exactly what this does. So I support the bike lanes.
My name is Nathan Lucero. Uh, I live in 90041. I want to thank the DOT for coming and presenting. Uh, thank you, Weezer, for conducting this meeting. And I just want to state a couple simple facts. I, uh, buy, I buy a coffee at Swart. I take him out and custom Bianca. My kid goes to the Eagle Art Montessori. And on Saturdays, we spend a lot of time on our bike. And uh, my kid just got a two-wheeler. And my, uh, my agenda is very simple. I want a very safe people rock for him to grow up in. He was born here, and I want it to be a nurturing place for him to live in. And so I am completely for these bike lanes. Thank you. Three speakers are Ann Porter, Michael Manuel, Yolanda Gonzalez. Uh, of the three, whoever comes up first, you could go ahead and yeah. My name is Ann Porter, and I'm concerned because decades ago I saw a film about South Africa during a hard life. And I was struck by the key role that restricting transportation played in creating conditions of slavery for the Bantu people. They were forced to live in compounds where the only transportation was a train that took them to their work sites at the beginning of the day and back to their compounds at night. There was nothing within the compound to make life worth living and no transportation except maybe walking within that compound. And surrounding that compound was a wire fence and a very harsh, dry land that would be perilous to cross without a motor vehicle. I'm concerned that reducing motor vehicle lanes, though well intended, is a beginning step toward creating a Bantu stand here in Northeast Los Angeles. Right now, because um, I think we need to start spraying 
the, the, the trial during, to the trial of these bike lanes to other parts of the city as well, not just to focus them on North East LA. And on balance, 24-7, these lanes are used by cars and the bikes, although they, they do use them when it's uh, raining, when it's cold, when it's really dark, there's very little use of the, the same uh, traffic space on the street. So I don't think on balance that it's a fair proposition. And we have already New York Boulevard uh, lanes that are in progress, and we can use those to, to evaluate how this is going before we can start uh, attacking the Colorado with this current thing. already know the result of putting bike lanes on Colorado. We just have to uh, try to navigate uh, York Boulevard. So I don't think we need to, we already know that it's going to decrease uh, uh, auto traffic. And I don't think that it's safe. I, I don't think that there are going to be a lot of uh, bikers who are going to feel that safe mixing the two uh, forms of transportation. I think the best solution to this problem is dedicated streets for my bicycles. So that uh, this is a, a, a we'll take Colorado. No, 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 no. This is a solution that was put forward in, in Amsterdam, implemented in Amsterdam. It's safer for the bikers, it's safer for the auto uh, drivers also. I'm a former resident of Santa Monica and we went through this bike lane stuff uh, maybe six years ago with Ocean Park Boulevard and uh, we had staffers of the Santa Monica um, the staff, uh, government say, oh, uh, do studies and say that it wouldn't decrease uh, the traffic. Well, once those bike lanes were in, the, the traffic is still, still to a standstill along that street. Um, and also, it, it, um, it, now you go into Santa Monica and those bike lanes are still empty. It's because bikers don't feel, I wouldn't really feel safe as a biker in a mixed street situation. So I think we really should consider a dedicated street. And we have two possibilities here in Eagle Rock. So that, that's my comment. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Mary Amheim, Michael Rippens, and Tom Toppin. Mary Armheim. Hi, hi Council and good evening. Um, I'm Mary Amrine. I live in Eagle Rock, have for 56 of my 57 years. I own property here. I vote, I pay my taxes, I shop and spend money here. I'm concerned about a lot of things about installing bike lanes on Colorado Boulevard. I'm curious as to the bicyclists who, once they get their speed point coming west on Colorado Boulevard and run the stop signs or the stoplights that all the cars have to legally stop at, the bicyclists do not slow down or stop. I, I don't see why cars are changing up or making That's it nonsense. It's not no, nonsense. No, 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 as I said earlier, in order for us to have a positive discussion, we need people to be respectful of one another's opinions, and that's the only no, way I, 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 I see it daily as a driver, and I use your boulevard to get to work. I've experienced the traffic jams at Avenue 50 in New York, and experienced the people on bicycles who don't obey the same traffic laws that we as car drivers have to. Thank you. about the uh, um, potential bike lanes and the uh, resulting increase in cycle traffic along Colorado. Number one, painting additional lanes on city streets can pose a health and environmental hazard and chemicals from the pigments that are not stored, disposed of properly by city workers. They do not use gloves, goggles, respirators while painting. Also, insects and small animals may be painted over or stepped on in the striping process. Two, because cyclists do not buy gas for their bikes, they're not doing their part to contribute to the local economy Therefore, bad for the fiscal future of our community. Three, according to current California law, bike owners are not required to purchase bicycle insurance. These taxpayers, like you and me, liable for the dozens of dollars in loss and damage incurred annually by the Number four, since cars are more expensive to buy, own, and operate, 
Drivers deserve to have full use of the streets at all times. <laughs> <laughs> This is nothing short of institutionally sanctioned discrimination against a specific segment of our population. Yeah. Increased presence of cyclists riding around in public wearing skin tight outfits and sitting in suggested bent over positions will create a dangerously titillated distraction for others and cause inappropriate physical stimulation for our children and senior citizens, ultimately resulting in the degradation of our community's moral fabric. Motorcycles kill millions of people every year. Bicycles are essentially a 200 house horsepower engine away from being a motorcycle. How many more innocent people need to die in the name of sustainable transportation? <laughs> it's clear that the creation of bike lanes is dangerous and it's a slippery slope. What next? Lane is designed specifically for walking? <laughs> if a cyclist in a helmet robs a local store, witnesses will not be able to describe the place, the length and color of the perpetrator's hair, let alone know if he was bald or not. This will make it very hard for law enforcement to bring the criminal cyclists to justice. It poses an unnecessary risk to our local businesses. <laughs> Number 10, I'm pretty sure the Second Amendment protects my right as a motorist to drive as fast as possible and to park where hard Thank you very much. <laughs> But let's talk about safety. Frustrated, angry drivers stuck in traffic? We're talking road rage here. That's not very safe, okay? Will it slow people down? It'll slow them down a lot during rush hour. But at 10.30 on a Thursday night when all those kids died, it's not gonna make any difference at all. It's not gonna slow people down one bit. It's Lisa, uh, respectfully, has one minute to speak. My, my real concern is that it's going to attract young kids to ride on a busy street that really shouldn't be doing it. My mom always told me, stay off the boulevard. I like, go from one end of town to the other, never go on Colorado Boulevard. I've ridden these streets all my life, and I still do. <coughs> Last thing I want to say, the DOT can lower the speed limit when they do the new speed survey, if there's sharrows on Colorado Boulevard, it allows them to do it. If there's a non-buffered lane going to the Eagle Rock Plaza, it allows them to lower the speed limit by five miles an hour. That will slow it down. It doesn't have to take away the car lanes to do it. Thank you. Caroline Aguirre, Aguirres, remember those two? James Christensen, and Judy Painter. Yes. I'm Caroline Aguirre, I've lived here all of my life. I'm retired law enforcement. My husband retired as a homicide detective with LAPD. He worked at the original Highland Park Station. I'm against the bike lanes. I mean, in, in reality, I like the bike lanes. Do not take away our driving lanes. That's ludicrous. Yeah. When we have a fire just recently on the 2, the 210-134 was closed. All the traffic came down. Colorado. Okay? When we have the cars go off the cliff on off the freeway, that was cut off. All the traffic came up Colorado. When we have an accident on the 110, all the traffic goes down Figueroa Street. Now, last Thursday, an Occidental College student and myself and two LA police officers went for an hour and a half and did a video on North Figueroa and Cyprus. It's there, you can look at the video. The traffic was bumper to bumper. We had cars across the street right there in front of Nightingale Junior High School that blocked the pedestrian traffic. The young kids trying to get to school couldn't get to school. We had people that were stalled in the middle of the intersection when the light was red. We had a major MTD, MTA bus make a left-hand turn onto Cyprus on the red light. Those two police officers saw it. They say it is dangerous, doing away with these bike lanes. Unfortunately, we have two officers here. They want to be truthful, but 
they can't because they'll be thrown under the bus, will tell you we're having our emergency fire trucks, our ambulances, and our police cars going code three, going up Rangeview to Stratford, towards Meridian, down Rangeview to go up over the hill to Avenue 51 to get into Eagle Rock because the traffic on York is stalled on peak time all the way from Marmondale clear to Avenue 53. It's bumper to bumper to bumper. That's what's really going on. You bike lanes can be fine, but don't take away our driving lanes, okay? I'm an Eagle Rock resident for uh, about 35 years now. Um, I'm opposed to the bike lanes. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this, everybody said a lot of stuff, but my thing is the engineering. I came in when they were doing the graphs up there, and I just want to remind everybody what the engineer did when they repainted the lines on Colorado Boulevard across from Trader Joe's. He put in a long left turn lane, and cars wanting to turn left into Trader Joe's, and wanting to turn left on the Dahlia, were running into each other. They didn't, the, the, the engineer couldn't figure that out. When I was watching this thing, I saw a lot of problems, like the, like the yellow lines returning on these side streets. You're going to have cars making U-turns and cars going to cross. They're where the bus is going to stop, like on Eagle Rock Boulevard. The buses are going to be stopping at their stop. Bicyclists are going to go around and not going to avoid the bike lane. The bikers that do come through here, the Saturday morning bikers are the speedsters, and they're not going to go in the bike lane, they're going to go in the traffic lanes because they love to speed. I think this is a waste of money, a waste of time, and a waste of effort that leave Colorado Boulevard the way it is.
know that I am not happy about paying taxes so that people can come in and ride their bikes. If you want to know what the bike lanes are going to look like, I suggest to make all of us, we don't want bike lane people, to set up, block off a lane. Let, let us look, let, let us see what it's going to be. This is one of those, we're having this meeting to make you happy, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it down in the throat anyway. Block off a lane so we can see that traffic is going to be blocked, blocked off. Colorado Boulevard. You can't even walk across the street because they're blocking all the lanes. We have that much traffic on Colorado Boulevard and you want to knock it down to two lanes. I think you people are nuts and I don't think it's right that we don't get our vote. I think the city council that we pay their salary ought to let us vote on whether we want it or not. <laughs> By 2035, there should be 8 to 10 percent of bicycles on the road. Well, that leaves room for about, what is it, I don't count very well anymore, but 74 percent cars. So I think by the year 2035, we should not create gridlock. We should be more concerned with moving traffic than with creating gridlock. And that's exactly what's taking place. Thank you. Yeah. W.P. Brady, Bill Roberts, and Albert Carrillo. Thank 
um, everybody for being here um, and showing support for whatever it is that you support. Um, I did want to take a minute to thank um, the generation that precedes me um, for all the technological advances and the progress that you've uh, given us in my generation. I do think that at this point, for my generation, it's uh, time for us to give a little bit back of what has been taken away. Um, people are on their cell phones, on computers, doing video games, all kinds of technological um, inside the house that was done for now, because that's where we're at. Um, but I think we've lost the appreciation for being outdoors, and I think that it's time for us to give that back to our kids, um, give it back to the youth. They're not going to be able to do that unless they have bike lanes. As a young lady, um, I know a lot of people ride around all over town, like the young gentleman just said, but I would feel safer riding around if I had bike lanes. Um, because I'm a young lady, and because I'm not a boy, if I get hit by a car, I would probably die. So um, I would appreciate the added safety feature. Um, like I said, I respect everybody here, but I do think that it's time for us to get that appreciation back to the kids. It is necessary to uh, reallocate the space on Colorado Boulevard to accommodate those that live there, work there, that buy things there, versus privileging those that would just drive through swiftly. Um, I occasionally find myself as a motorist, and also as a cyclist, but as a motorist, uh, alongside a group of cyclists, and since I have the perspective of being both, uh, I understand how to negotiate and share the road safely. Um, I find it better to be on the street with a bike lane, because that way they're not holding me back. Um, you can safely flow through the street. And the cycle. Basically, uh, what we're trying to build is a network of lanes. Um, the network effect is well documented. It's a widely known phenomenon, which basically states the more lanes you have, the bigger network that you have, and the more valuable that network is. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Manny Hernandez. I'm glad to see a lot of neighbors on my block here. I support bicycle lanes. I ride with my daughter. We go to lots of places in town. We go to Peekaboo. We go to Pete's Blue Chip. We go to uh, uh, Dave's Chillin' and Drillin'. And she loves it. We go attached because it's safer for her. I know she's not going to stray into traffic. But I'm worried that cars don't believe bicycles have the right to be in the street. And that's what bike lanes will do for us. They will give us a dedicated space where we can ride and feel comfortable. And I hope that's a legacy we can pass on to our children. I read Christ Soft, Jerry Tribe, Lay Gerard. Hello, my name is Alec Bertoso. I'm with the LA County Bicycle Coalition. And while I live in the city of Glendale, we do have a lot of members that live in Northeast LA. Uh, there's been a growing support for this project. A lot of people want it. Um, it's not only for bicyclists, but it's a pedestrian and driver improvement and that creates safety along the corridor. Um, we find throughout the country that bike lanes add an economic uh, advantage for businesses along those corridors. Um, and I think that we've seen uh, support along, uh, from the businesses on Colorado as well. So we want to turn this thoroughfare into an active living street, and that includes bicyclists and pedestrians, and they need to be safe. Thank you. Eagle Rock Montessori in the fall, and I used to ride my bike all the time. I was in fact a bike passenger in New York, and I've never really felt safe riding in this neighborhood, I tell you the truth. Um, I've been yelled at by cars that say, get on the sidewalk, and when I've been on the sidewalk, I've been yelled at to get back in the road. Um, in New York, you're not allowed to ride on the sidewalk. You get a ticket because it is not safe for pedestrians, and you can easily hurt them and get hurt as people enter uh, exit buildings. Um, I also wanted to say that when my kids get out of the car, when they park, and right now we do mostly drive around the neighborhood, we feel very unsafe because cars zoom by. 
and also just point to the fact that when you park and have someone exiting their car, if cyclists have a lane right next to you, it's much safer to get in and out of your car. And I vow personally to ride my bike a lot more and ride my car a lot less, opening up additional parking spaces um, and spaces on the road for those of you who do drive. Um, I basically want a place that I feel is safe for my kids. Thank you. for three, three reasons. Making a better community for bike riders, making it safer for pedestrians. We've got five pedestrian fatalities in the last 13, 12 years uh, along Colorado Boulevard, which is insane. We need to slow down traffic. And also, it will improve conditions for businesses, not just for commuters zipping from Glendale, Pasadena. It will slow down people and improve business. Thank you. Is this Nico? I just noticed my next batch. We have uh, Gerard, same last name. So. Yeah, it's Nico. Oh, I don't think he wants to say that. <laughs> yeah. You want to say hello? No? <laughs> say hello. Hello. <laughs> Alex Carver, Dina DeLola, Nicola. Three lanes each way, 
That's pretty much the same as the 134. Um, I don't see why you can't put bike lanes in there. I have a young daughter on the way, and I would like to see her to be able to trace her community more. I shop a lot of old bars that have bike lanes, such as yours, because they're easier to access. Um, at the same time, though, I take Colorado because I don't want to be forced to go down to New York and do an extra three or four miles on my commute, which already takes over an hour to get to Pasadena. Um, I don't see why cars have to go so fast. I see people trying to jaywalk across the street. They're straight in the middle. They're going to do more crosswalks and bike lanes. Thank you. Thank you. Because of the mix of businesses on Colorado Boulevard, I will never be found riding a bicycle on Colorado Boulevard, but I completely support this project. It's going to make my life more pleasant, happier, and I think it's going to be great for the businesses on Colorado Boulevard, many of whom support this project. And you think they probably have more of an individual stake in this than any of us do individually, whether we like bicyclists or we don't like bicyclists on our streets. But I'll be more comfortable parking, getting into a spot, getting out of the spot, walking down Colorado, and hopefully we'll have more outdoor dining, which is one of the great things about Eagle Rock, is this great mix of restaurants, and I want to spend more time on Colorado Boulevard doing more comfortable parking. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeff Lass. I'm from College. So first of all, I want to report that um, Oxana College formally supports the lanes on Colorado and Figueroa on behalf of our 2,000 students and 500 employees. Myself, live in Glissel Park and work in Eagle Rock, come to Colorado a lot. I want to feel safe here. I want to spend more money here. Please put in the lanes and uh, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Messer and Severine Martinez. Very good evening, my name is Tim Turner. Definitely not a woman speaker. I've got five generations of my family who live here. Um, I know that the bike lanes are probably going to happen. However, with bike lanes, we wouldn't let them catch me on Colorado Boulevard. I'll be on Hill Drive, Las Flores, or any of the other uh, parallel streets. I know that there was a meeting held in February for everybody to go to. However, from what I understand from the letter that was put out the other day from the Department of Planning that uh, there was a, a, a notice put in the uh, LA Times and then there was an email sent out to 1,400 people and those 1,400 people were part of the implementation of the bike lanes and part of the design of the 2010 bike program. It doesn't seem to me that the community itself was included in any of this and uh, what I'd like to see is uh, our community be able to vote on this and thank God we don't get as much government as we did. My name is Steve Messer. I've been a resident of Eagle Rock for 27 years. I've been a bicycle commuter for that time as well. And I think some people in this room are losing sight of the fact that streets are for moving people, regardless of their mode of transport. And as a cyclist, I would love to ride anywhere. I take the lane as, I, as my right, as a vehicular cyclist. And on Colorado Boulevard, I've had way too many close encounters. I've been yelled at, honked at and cars just go way too fast down there. My next door neighbors had bicycles for which they exercised, but their idea of a bike ride is to drive to the Rose Bowl and do laps of the Rose Bowl because that's where they feel safe. They don't feel safe riding around here, and I think that the bicycle lanes here will improve the safety and, and make it more desirable for people to use this as an alternative mode of transport. I can also say that the $50,000 per mile is a very small price to pay for just preventing one accident or one death and, and the improved health and well-being of our youth and our community. Her mom writes to work now. These are people that I love and care about. I want them to be safe. 
It doesn't matter to me if bikes represent 1% of traffic or 50. Everybody deserves to be safe regardless of their mode of travel. I want, I want us as, as a community to celebrate safe streets, not commute times. Thank you. Colorado Boulevard and make commutes for myself, students, and everyone safe. 